In this week's show, are the Young Avengers finally in the MCU? And have we found the actor who's going to play Hulkling? Does the new head of DC plan to steal actors from Marvel? And I take a look at the next three big movies to come out of Marvel. Ant-Man and Wasp, Quantumania, Thunderbolts, and Guardians of the Galaxy 3. And all the news that broke about them this week. I love putting together all those different timelines and how each one connects to the other in the future and in the past. So I'm going to link up those, I'm going to try to, but this is I Heard a Rumor, the series where I talk about all the latest news, rumors, and speculations in the geek world. I also have a load of fun talking about the comics that might go up or down on the market in reaction to the latest stories or news that's happening. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the content. Leave a comment below and please like, subscribe and tell your friends about the channel. Just hang on for a few seconds and we'll get into it all right after the intro. Well, hi again, everyone, and the geek worlds were lit this week with tons of news, and I guess the rumors around who the new characters are that are going to be introduced in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. So why not start there? There's a rumor that William Jackson Harper, now you might know him as Chidi from The Good Place, well, that he'll be playing Quaz. Now, all we know is that he's a telepath. And I don't know if they mean Quasar, and they just shorten the name. And then Katie M. O'Brien is supposedly going to be playing Gentora. Which brings in the question, are we going to see more of the Micronauts? So I've heard that Disney are now going to call them Micros because they can't rightfully use the name Micronauts because the rights belong to Hasbro. Same as Rom the Space Knight. We have seen some of the toy lines already, and those have come out for all the different characters that are going to be introduced and we're going to see in Guardians of the Galaxy 3. And my favorite, or oh, definitely by far my favorite, is the Baby Rocket. Now, this comes as a normal Funko or the Flock exclusive version, which in all fairness I'm probably going to get because it has that plush texture, texture to the figure. And I kind of, yeah... I love wasting my money on useless junk. Something a little more serious, and this week, it's something that really grinds my gears. Because I spend hours every day listening to geek spec and rumors, and it seems like more and more keyboard warriors have something negative to say about anything that comes out. Now, don't get me wrong, everyone is entitled to their opinion. But at what stage does that become toxic? I watch a few big shows, and I mean, they have thousands and thousands of followers. And it's a constant bashing of actors and actresses on how they look, or if they think something's gonna fail. Now, I don't know whether this is just for views and to stay edgy and controversial, but I recently heard some American guy go off about how Will Poulter looks terribly painted gold and he's all steroided up first off i think he looks amazing as adam warlock and second it takes an insane diet often two or three day like a day training sessions just to get your body to that point so for all those haters out there all i can realistically say is that you couldn't do better I don't know, whatever happened to, if you don't have something nice to say, don't say anything at all. Anyway, rant over. Speaking of steroids, Hugh Jackman came out this week saying that he intends to be bigger than ever for Deadpool 3. And that he doesn't use steroids. He's obviously gotten a lot of flack for his physique from the same keyboard warriors. Now, 
Agatha, Coven of Chaos, might introduce Miles Gutierrez Riley as Teddy Altman, or Hulkling. Now, I don't know what backstory they're going to use to introduce Hulkling into the MCU, but going to the comics, and I'll put a picture up there. In the comics, Hulkling is a powerful Kree Skrull hybrid with, I guess he has a powerful heritage on both sides because he's coming from a grandfather who was a Emperor Skrull on that one side and the son of a Kree hero, Marvel, on the other. Now we know Joe Locke has been cast as Billy Kaplan or Wiccan. And spoiler alert, those two hook up and they get married in the comics. I mean, I remember the issue where they kissed for the first time was banned in a few countries due to the open homosexuality. And speaking of gayness, it looks like Deadpool has his first non-hetero relationship in the comics. I know I wanted to do a separate comic segment this week. I don't think I'm going to get a chance to. So in Deadpool issue 3, that's out now, he has a date with Valentine Buong, who's a non-binary assassin. And Deadpool has a string of ex-wives and they come, come in many shapes and sizes and forms. But this is the first time his pansexuality has been openly written about. Then Cooper Cohen or Web Weaver, who is... So he's the guy that saved his crush, Peter Parker, in he first appeared in Edge of Spider-Verse issue 5. Now, he's the gay Spider-Man of Earth 71490. And he was kicked out of his house for his sexuality. But he's going to have a big part to play in the new Spider-Man run. I personally think the inclusion of characters that people can identify with is really important in comics. Usually, the people who read comics aren't the typical popular like cool kids. And comics are a perfect form of escapism into a world where anyone can retreat to indulge their imagination. Now, there are a few series coming out that I am super excited about. So let's quickly go through them. The Boys Season 4. Now that's said to be the most disgusting thing so far. And this is coming from a show where Season 3 Episode 1 had that mad cringe scene that I can't even say on camera because I'm guessing there might be kids watching. It was so savage that my wife decided to stop watching the show altogether. And then we found out this week that Wednesday, season two, that's on the cards and it's a go. Nikki M. James has been added to the cast of Daredevil, Born Again. But we don't know as what role yet. Um, biggest new game, like, so, well, it's a game-based series that apparently broke the internet was Last of Us. And hopefully I'm going to watch the first episode this weekend. Now, Pedro Pascal, he's one of the leads, the main lead. He played Mandalorian. And he came up this week saying that he would love to play a Marvel superhero. Blade is set to start filming on May 30th. And I hope it's going to focus on him and not Bloodline just yet. And then we found out Madam Webb has finished filming and we also have a new logo. Moon Knight Season 2 is coming, and while we don't have an exact date, uh, we do know it's going to premiere before Avengers Secret Wars. And then we found out that Secret Invasion from there will lead into Armor Wars. We got new imagery from Ant-Man and Wasp and new posters too, and they look insane. It's going to introduce Kang to us properly because, I mean, he's going to be the big bad villain for a little while. Kind of like our new Thanos. Loki Season 2 will have a Kang variant. And one rumor suggested that there was a plan in the movie to reveal that one of Kang's variants was the author of the Darkhold. Now you remember that was the book that Wanda was after from Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. I love trying to figure out how all these things piece together. Um, and what they're planning and what they might be planning for, for the future and how it's going to lead into secret wars and oh, okay. Anyway, in Thunderbolts news, Julia Louise Dreyfus, and I'm giving my way, age away here, but I remember her from Seinfeld. 
She plays Contessa Valentina Allegra de Fontaine, or Val, and she wants to fight in the new movie. So she isn't exactly a spring chicken. I did hear that Sadie Sink from Stranger Things might play Songbird, and that's a really interesting casting, because I think she's a very good actress. One of the top stories this week would have to be the rumor that James Gunn wants to bring some of the star talent from Guardians of the Galaxy over to DC. We know Dave Bautista won't be back as Drax, but possibly even stealing Chris Pratt and other cast members. Because if you remember, James Gunn directed the Guardians of the Galaxy movies for Marvel, and it just makes sense that he would favor actors that he's already worked with previously. It looks like Jacob Elordi is the frontrunner to play the new Superman. Now this is all still at the speculation phase because we know Gunn teased that post of also Superman, but we don't know which version of Superman James Gunn and Peter Safran are thinking of to bring in. Personally, I want to see Calvin Ellis, but an all-star Superman could be pretty amazing. I found it funny that Robert Pattinson this week said he would love to see Condiment King in the Matt Reeves sequel of Batman. He thought it would, be, it would be brilliant to see him squirt mustard on someone. And we're going to have to talk about the DC problem child, Ezra Miller. So he's going to face one year probation because he pled guilty for that unlawful trespassing that he was charged with. There are other charges, but they're being handled in different districts. So we'll see what happens there. Unfortunately, Alec Baldwin is being charged for involuntary manslaughter after that incident two years ago on the set of Rust. And that was where he accidentally killed Helena Hutchins when he fired the gun that was loaded with a real bullet. Now, onto slightly more positive news. I wanted to introduce everyone to a friend and a brilliant artist in the scene. So his name is Nathan Burton Phillips. You might have already heard of him because his work is insane and uh, he's absolutely brilliant. So now we go back, I mean, about over 20 years where we worked together in a crazy pool bar in South Africa young dumb throwing around bottles absolutely mad times but look at him now he is an insane artist making international waves you could have seen him on things are getting sketchy i know mike ruth is on there and he does have a tattoo studio in pretoria in south africa called humdinger tattoos so if you're ever keen for some like super ink it comes highly recommended he is now moving to Colorado Springs in the US. So I wanted to take this chance to showcase a little of his work and just do a bit of a spotlight on him because he's done a few, a few blank sketch covers for me and they are out of this world. So you can check him out on Comic Art Nate on Instagram. And when we were chatting, he showed me a few of the statues that he's repaired and custom painted. So it's a new thing he's into as well. So this dude has mad talent. Keep an eye out for him, like on the whole scene, mark my words, he's gonna do big things. And I guess that's it from me. It's a slightly longer show than normal, but thanks for watching everyone. Please remember to like, subscribe, tell your friends, like tell them what it's about so we can grow the channel. And oh, we still have the t-shirt giveaway to do. I just need a, a few more entries, so if you can just comment down below, tell, you, tell me who you think is scarier, Homelander from The Boys or Omni-Man from Invincible. Speaking of, the new trailer from, for season two of Invincible dropped yesterday, so it is crazy. Till next week, catch you on the side of the flipping. Okay, bye.